together. <laughs> um, anyway, hello everyone. I'm Tracy Stoffel. I'm with Colorado Main Street. Um, I'm just gonna um, probably very needlessly go over some Zoom housekeeping since everybody has been typing in their information uh, in the chat box. I think we all know um, about all of these things by now, but um, we do have some helpful hints on the screen. You know, if you hover over the bottom of your screen for options, um, we ask that you stay on mute during the presentations. I think we're taking questions at the end today. Um, we do enjoy having your video on and seeing everyone. Um, Arianthe, I can't see you. I'm sorry, I have to give her a special shout out. I have known Arianthe for years. <laughs> um, there she is, hi. Um, uh, we encourage the use of chat and reactions just to kind of make this a little bit more um, interactive. And oh, uh, and Erica, I do believe we're planning to record this webinar. I don't know if you've started that yet or not. Yep, it's uh, already recording. <laughs> Excellent. So just might want to keep that in mind. And um, with those housekeeping items, I'll go ahead and turn this on over to Gail. Well, welcome everyone. It's nice to see familiar faces on today's uh, CLG and Main Street. Uh, partnership. Um, we're glad to have you here and thank you for an hour of your time today. What we're basically going to do today is explore how Main Street and certified local governments can work in tandem and work collaboratively to help you achieve your goals. And then we're going to cover real quickly, since most of you know about the Main Street program, just a slide or two on the National Main Street Movement and the Colorado Main Street team. And then we're going to kick it over to both Main Street and Larry to talk about Main Street and CLG tools and incentives to help you achieve those goals. And then really the meat of this presentation is gonna be our wonderful speakers. They're gonna talk about uh, how Main Street and uh, CLGs work in tandem in their community to make those dreams a reality. And then at the end, we'll do Q&A. If you have questions all along the way, feel free to use the chat box or um, you could raise your hand if you want, and uh, those questions will be directed to the appropriate speakers uh, following this uh, about a 45-minute presentation. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go to the next slide. I get to cover Main Street. So all of you know that are in Main Street that the real foundation and core of Main Street, which was founded in 1980, uh, it was established under the National Trust for Historic Preservation. So preservation really is at the roots of the entire Main Street program. And we're very fortunate to have Larry Lucas is our uh, preservation architect, is part of this, one of the staff members for Colorado Main Street program. And across the country, there's over 2,200 communities, both urban and rural, that participate in this, what I call a movement. And then in 2013, um, they actually launched an independent subsidiary from the National Trust, for, National Trust for Historic Preservation called the National Main Street. And that is a, a nonprofit organization. And because they have that status, they're able to go after uh, some other funding, which you have seen grants come through that with their partnerships with different organizations and agencies. I love that doorbell, that's amazing. Um, and with that, um, just so you know, preservation is the basic for what we do. So we can go ahead and go to the next slide. So Main Street and Historic Preservation, you guys all know um, being part of the Main Street program or being part of a Historic Preservation Commission in your community, that preserving these downtown buildings is really key. It's a treasure uh, of communities across the state that have a story to tell, that have history, a lot of you celebrate through different events your, uh, your history and your heritage and how your community was actually founded, be it mining or agriculture or, or a, a resort area. And we help you uh, through Main Street and through the preserving of your um, historic assets, creating a vision in, into the future. But in order to succeed, we are all tasked with wearing multiple hats. But we need to have visible results um, from completing projects and moving the dial forward, both long and short term, and we all know historic preservation projects uh, can take a long time from start to finish, so patience is always a virtue on those. And what we're going to do here in this particular uh, presentation is talk about how Main Street and CLGs can partner 
to help you achieve your goals in this journey. So with that, um, turn it over to Larry. Hi, everybody. It's, it's going to be hard to follow Gail. She's a great speaker, isn't she? Um, I'm the Main Street Architect. I'm Larry Lucas. I've been with the program for three years now, um, but I have almost 10 years of experience working in Main Street as an architect. Um, I worked for the state of Oklahoma before coming to Colorado. We're just going to talk a little bit about the benefits of Main Street preservation. Um, you guys probably know these things, but let's just go through them because, you know, it's easy to forget. Uh, retaining your local history and the authenticity of the district. Authenticity being, you know, a building that hasn't changed its face or too much of itself um, inside or out. Um, you increase the value of the property. You, um, you save building materials and actually you're using existing space. So a common saying in preservation is that the greenest building is already built. And that is where it comes from in, a, in, a, in mostly, is that we have these great resources, how do we use them? Some things we're targeting is energy efficiency this year and renewable energy. And so stay tuned with that for Main Street. And uh, you can go to the next slide. So what we offer, there are three different subsets of what my position with Main Street um, uh, uh, includes. Um, I'm, on a, I'm on a grant from the State Historical Fund, and we're going to uh, have a representative from, from uh, the State Historical Fund with us today. Um, but, I, but I need to complete historic preservation, technical assistance, education, and advocacy work. And I'm going to go through those real quick, uh, what that means and what we do. So what I'd like to do most, and probably where the most value is in my services, is I can come out to a community and meet with individual property owners. At DOLA, typically the money that DOLA uh, doles out can only go to a local government. But with Main Street, and since I'm funded through the State Historical Fund, I actually can straddle the fence and help both public and private owners. Also, we can complete drawings and different recommendations. Um, and I like to connect uh, different networks, our Main Street towns. I like to put them together with uh, key incentives um, and opportunities. Um, community engagement may mean having a charrette in your town with local uh, stakeholders. Um, that just means a workshop where we actually might have some fun with pencils and paper. And um, we collaborate with History Colorado very much. I mean, I would say on a weekly basis, we're touching base with them and they're touching base with us. So we're lucky to have that relationship. Okay, next slide. So preservation education is another component of what we do at Main Street. Um, we like to not necessarily um, just play up the importance, but we really want to teach people you know, why historic preservation is better. Why is it better than raising a building and then uh, putting in a, another one? You know, those are the things that we can help with. And also how it, you know, makes community pride so much better whenever we take care of our assets and resources that we already have. We're also working on some bigger picture type items. Um, like some design guidelines, uh, different resources. Uh, you can see on the right, um, educational resources about how buildings, what, how, what you call all the parts of the building. Um, we write newsletters um, about architecture um, and almost every issue we have something. So I'd encourage you all to go look at our website and go under resources, and then you can find newsletters if you wanna read those. And we work with national resources as well. Okay, next one. So advocacy work, this one's a little bit interesting, but it's essentially how we reach out to other preservation groups and the general public so that we can increase the awareness of preservation and more adoption across the state. And that's a big part of what today is, is um, you know, bringing everyone together uh, with Main Street and History Colorado, just to learn more about how we work together and how we can work together to help you. Um, Again, we like to facilitate partnerships, even between our towns. Our Main Street managers have a, a listserv that they, they can talk back and forth on. And I, I've seen that answer so many questions. If somebody has a question in one town, there's a good chance the question's been asked in another town. So we really help each other a lot. We also do have an affiliates listserv that we utilize as well for all our affiliate communities. And if you haven't, um, if you haven't already signed up as an affiliate, uh, again, check out our website and click on the Join Main Street link. Okay, next slide. 
This is just a list of some of our services, um, just generally from Main Street. We offer many grants to our actual official candidate programs. So affiliates haven't quite reached that status yet. But once, once they sign up, we have an MOU with them from DOLA to the town, and we can provide these grant opportunities. It does include my technical assistance. Um, that also, we, on a case-by-case -case basis, we've been working with affiliate towns to get them ready to apply to be candidates. So keep that in mind and let us know if we can help. And then also there's a national network. So more than just the statewide network, there's a 2,000 plus towns where there are Main Street managers and board members and volunteers, and they like to all come together on this thing called The Point. It's an online social media thing through the National Main Street Center. And again, if, the, if there's a question there, or a problem there, there's a good chance somebody else has already had it. And we, Main Street is really like a family too, if you, if you wanna think about it that way. Okay, next slide. So just keep in mind that we have a strong network of uh, dedicated um, people in, in all of our Main Street towns. Um, we're here to help you, the Main Street staff. There's only three of us, we're small but mighty. Um, and we just are really glad that you're here today and we appreciate your time. And um, with that, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna introduce our next speakers. So from History Colorado today, we have Erica Duvick who will be presenting. Uh, she's the Certified Local Government Coordinator at History Colorado. Um, Katie Arnson is, the, is an archeologist and she'll also be on the call, although I don't think she's presenting, but she's our SHF representative as well as an archeologist. And I'll, and I'll hand it off now to Erica. Thanks, Larry, and thank you all for having me today. It's so great to have our Main Street and CLG communities here together. Uh, so as Larry said, my name's Eric Duvick. I'm the preservation planner for Colorado State Historic Preservation Office, which is part of History Colorado. Um, and so like you said, I manage our certified local government program, which we refer to as the CLG program. And I do know that is really the worst name for a program <laughs> and the worst acronym. So I apologize on behalf of the federal government. Uh, so this program is a partnership between federal, state and local governments working on historic preservation. So any unit of government can be certified as a CLG. So in Colorado, that means our cities, towns and counties. We currently have 66 CLGs. And as you can see, we are adding new ones all the time like Fort Morgan, which was certified earlier this month. And so I'm going to do a very quick overview of the program and I kind of apologize in advance how quickly I'm gonna go through this. Uh, so feel free to add any questions in the chat box as we go along and I'll try to answer them. Next slide. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so a very brief explanation of the program's history. Uh, the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 plays a huge role in historic preservation because it serves as the framework for most of the work being done to preserve places around the country. So when it was first passed, it formed a state and federal partnership, creating state historic preservation offices in each state. And then the local partnership was added in 1980 with the CLG program. So one of the most important elements of this program is sharing federal funding for preservation with local governments. So just as the federal government shares that funding with the states, we pass it along to our CLGs. Next slide. So let's talk about the benefits real quick. Uh, so as I mentioned, CLG. And of course the UPS man has to come during this every time. All right, CLGs are eligible for exclusive grant funding. So lately we've had about $150,000 available each year for, for our CLGs. Once the local government has been certified, their locally designated properties are eligible for Colorado State Historic Preservation Tax Credit. Uh, they also receive online access to our cultural resource database, Compass. They have exclusive training opportunities, which has of course lately been a lot of webinars and also scholarships to our statewide uh, preservation conference. CLGs also have a close relationship with our office. So we're always just an email or a phone call away for any technical assistance questions and to provide resources that you might need. And then lastly, CLGs have the opportunity to review and comment on National Register nominations. Next slide. So there's several requirements for CLGs, mainly that they pass a local preservation ordinance that regulates historic preservation in their community. 
This also requires establishing a historic preservation commission, maintaining a system for survey and inventory, providing for public participation, again, the National Register nominations, annual reporting requirements, and attending training each year. Next slide. So in that same vein, uh, preservation ordinances also generally outline the elements of the local preservation program, which are survey, designation, incentives, design review, and public education. So these are all done on the local level and are unique to each community. Next slide. A survey serves as the basis for pretty much every other preservation activity because it leads to designation, which then leads to incentives and the design review process. And that's simply the documentation of historic places. So they're documented through written descriptions, historical research, photographs, maps, et cetera. Uh, and this provides a lot of the information needed to designate and then preserve a building. Next slide. And speaking of designation, uh, you all might be familiar with the National Register of Historic Places or the State Register of Historic Properties. Uh, well, local governments have their own registers to list, designate, landmark historic places. And so they also have their own criteria for what makes a place worthy of designation. So that's also going to be unique to each community. But generally, designation serves as the tool for making properties eligible for incentives and design review. Next slide. So here we have a list of potential incentives, uh, including local incentives. Of course, I don't think any CLG has any or, or has all of these uh, incentives at once, uh, but all of these can be found, you know, one or more in most of our CLGs across the state. There are also incentives available statewide, like the state and federal rehabilitation tax credits, the state historical fund, and the Colorado Historical Foundation's revolving loan fund. Um, so we know preservation can cost a bit more. So the intent of these incentive programs is to bridge any funding gaps that might exist for people trying to preserve their buildings. Next slide. And then there's design review, which I think is where preservation can often get a bad reputation. Uh, so this is that regulatory process I mentioned before, where changes to designated buildings are reviewed by a government appointed board. So CLGs are required to have this review process in place but it's up to each CLG whether or not property owners have to comply with their decisions. Next slide. And then last, but probably most importantly, we have advocacy and public education. And this is where we try to equip all of our CLGs to be advocates for preservation within their local governments, as well as their wider communities. And these are just some of the ways that they go about doing that important work. So just to wrap this up real quick, because uh, I think it might be over my time, uh, so you might have noticed that I haven't made a big pitch to sell you on the CLG program today, and that's because we are actually in the middle of doing some planning for potential changes to the program, and you can actually assist us with those efforts by completing a survey, which I'm going to put in the chat box, and so I do encourage you to reach out to me if you're interested in the program so we can keep in touch about any potential changes, and I will also share my email address in the chat as well, so thank you. Larry, Larry, you're on mute. That's funny. I've got to do that once a day. Um, just before we start, I want to uh, go ahead and introduce all of our speakers. We're going to have three different uh, Main Street towns um, represented today. Um, the first is Central City, and we have Lindsay Flueling and Lisa Romhill, and they are going to be speaking. Um, uh, Lindsay. Uh, well, Lindsay Flueling, she's the Historic Preservation Officer, and Lisa Ronhilt is our Main Street Advisor. Then we will actually have La Junta, where Cynthia Neeb, um, who's the former director of the State Historical Fund, now lives in La Junta, and she's the Urban Renewal, Economic Development, Main Street, and CLG person. Now, that's a mouthful, but she's going to be presenting. And then finally, we're going to hear from Steamboat Springs where Lisa Popovich, the Executive Director of Main Street Steamboat Springs, will lead that, uh, that presentation. And we do have some others on the call um, from each community today as well. So I'd just like to say welcome to you all and, and thank you for loaning us your, your Main Street managers. Um, and, and Lisa, let us know that Lindsay is not on the call quite yet. Um, 
Cynthia, would you mind um, hopping in? I will get to your slides here if you're okay with that. This is Lisa speaking. Actually, I see Lindsay just hopped oh. on, so we okay. might be in the time we might be perfect. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, sorry thank about you, that. everyone. I will get back to the larger presentation here. Okay. So first up, we have Central City. Thank you all for being here. Well, hi, I'm Lindsay Flewelling, the Historic Preservation Officer, and Lisa is also on the call. She's the Community Development Planner and Main Street Advisor um, for Central City. Do you want to go to the next slide? Um, so a little background for our um, certified local government. Um, Central City has had a long history of historic preservation. We became a National Historic Landmark District in 1961 and uh, were added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1966. The nomination was updated and the boundaries were expanded to include Black Hawk and Nevadaville in 1991. And prior to that, there was a survey of the historic resources in our area um, in 1986, showing that there were 294 contributing resources in the Central City portion of the Historic District. We had a previous Historic Preservation Ordinance, uh, Historic Preservation Commission and Design Guidelines set up um, in the 1970s. But with the introduction of gaming in Central City, uh, Black Hawk and Cripple Creek in 1991, Central City wanted to build an even stronger Historic Preservation Program um, to be in line with the intent of the legislation, which stated that gaming was to support preservation in these cities. So Central City passed a new Historic Preservation Ordinance in 1991 new design guidelines in 1992, um, which included regular design review by the Historic Preservation Commission, and then CLG status was achieved in 1996. Um, next slide. Um, since then, we've had two um, additional complete surveys of all resources in Central City, um, one that was completed between 1998 and 2000, by the Heritage Resource Center in Golden, and then one that was completed in 2014 by the Center of Preservation Research at CU Denver. The surveys help with HPC decisions on design review, and they help HPC and staff encourage property owners to rehabilitate and renovate their properties so that they stay um, contributing to the district. And we've even had a few properties that were originally not contributing, but they were built in the period of significance and the property owners were able to make changes um, that led them to now be contributing in the latest survey. So um, hopefully we can continue to help property owners um, to rehabilitate their properties in um, sensitive ways that help them stay contributing and um, even more become contributing in the future. Um, it also helps uh, us know um, about all of the buildings and businesses in Central City um, so we can develop uh, building inventories, which Lisa is going to talk about um, in a minute. And um, as we have some vacant properties in town, it helps us to know what all the previous uses were and how those might be put to use in the future. Um, Central City also, because we're a CLG, gets technical assistance from the State Historic Preservation Office and um, as part of Main Street gets architectural assistance and those can complement each other um, as we're trying to help property owners find solutions for different issues that come up. So for example, we just had a um, historic school building um, that was putting in a new exterior staircase and lift. And um, because we haven't had that type of project uh, before, I um, really wanted our HPC to see um, good examples of exterior lifts added to historic properties. So I reached out to Erica um, and then uh, also to the CLG um, listserv to get advice on what a good example of a his, of an exterior lift might look like um, so that our HPC was able to make an informed decision on this particular property. Um, and then the other program benefits that we've had in the past were participating in the review of historic preservation tax credits. Um, we did with the previous um, version of the tax credits, but not the current ones, but we did have a residential property um, take advantage of those um, just before they expired. Um, and so that's a great resource for, um, for CLGs to be able to offer. Um, next slide. 
All right. Um, so like Lindsay mentioned with the historic survey, I think this is one of the areas where we really um, see like the CLG and Main Street program kind of work in tandem. So as part of through our Main Street program, we maintain a commercial building inventory. So I have a screenshot here of what our building inventory looks like on the right side and a lot of the information that completes this inventory, we pull directly from our historic surveys. So it helps knowing um, just the condition of the building in terms of its integrity um, and historic structure, um, as well as um, just being able to know about the previous uses and all that. So um, that's a big tool that we take advantage of and appreciate um, being a CLG community as, as well. Um, as an in-state community. Um, so that's just a quick little snapshot of what that all looks like for us. And then we can go on to the next slide and we'll, Lindsay and I will go over kind of the structure of our Historic Preservation Commission and then our Main Street program. Yeah, so both of our, both of those programs are um, part of commissions that are part of the city. Um, and the Historic Preservation Commission is a city appointed commission um, that's required by the um, Historic Preservation Ordinance. We have five regular members and one alternate. Um, they maintain and enhance the historical, architectural, and geographical heritage of the city. Um, they, um, their main uh, task is design review for applications of certificates of appropriateness, um, which are based on our design guidelines, um, which have been, they were redone in 2017 and um, those design guidelines were written in line with the Secretary of Interior standards um, so that we uh, make sure that all of our decisions in the Historic Preservation Commission um, are in line with those standards. And um, HPC also works on public outreach um, and other projects to make sure that um, people who own property here and residents in Central City know um, that they uh, need to seek out the Historic Preservation Commission before making any um, exterior changes to their property. And I guess I should say we only um, review exterior um, changes and no interior changes as part of our um, design review. And um, also just to make sure that, um, you know, that we're celebrating the historic preservation and heritage of Central City. And, and then with our Main Street Commission, it's a city appointed commission as well. It was established by a resolution, um, but we're kind of unique where we also have our 501c3 status, but um, Lindsay and I both work for the city and um, in the same department. So um, the, the Main Street Commission decided to go for the 501c3 status just to um, kind of diversify some fundraising methods and being able to take advantage of other grant opportunities. But I included here just um, a little bit of language from that resolution that created our Main Street Group, um, which is to promote and encourage development, public awareness of an interest in Main Street Central City. And a big reason to why we explored the Main Street uh, program in the past years was because of that historic preservation aspect with um, downtown development. So it was just uh, fitting for our community since we already have the strong HPC presence and everything. And so that's all I have on that slide. And I think that kind of concludes our presentation we just had. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now let's head to La Junta. You're on mute, Cynthia me. There we go. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Cynthia Neeb, and I am with the city of La Junta. Um, basically, a sweet little town. Uh, actually, we're a city uh, in southeastern Colorado. Next slide, please. <laughs> I got you, Tracy. <laughs> um, we, just like everyone else, ha have had um, actually, Bernie visiting us. Uh, this is at the entrance to town, uh, and he's sitting near 1024, which we dragged up a hill so that everybody could see that we have a proud um, a transportation background, as well as some local artists. Next, please. So, just so you know, I consider Main Street to be family. I agree with everything that Larry said. I agree with everything that Gail says. Um, 
I, I think that, uh, quite frankly, uh, Main Street is an unbeatable combination. And I live by actually these five, I don't call them four pillars, I call them five pillars. Um, it's my go-to for structure. If I just follow this with all the titles that I have, I am able to move forward. And I have to say something as well. The Main Street folks are supportive. I'd say the most supportive people I have ever met in my entire life for helping us move forward. Um, I always feel like somebody has my back. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. So the Main Street works with all programs, and cert, including the certified local government, and you can fit anything under these categories or um, mix the categories. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Next, please, Tracy. Um, so the, the, we started late. We're babies. We don't have this this really sophisticated outlay um, like um, they've gotten Steamboat. Um, we started actually back in um, December 2017, and I followed. I was new on board, and I was just the director of economic development and urban renewal at that time. And so I, what I did was I always go back to plans. That's, I want to know that it's the will of the people that I'm doing what I'm doing. And two vetted plans, one from 2016 that was provided by DCI and then our uh, strategic plan um, that was approved in 2017. So I hit the door on December 11th, 2017, and we became a certified local government during this uh, Saving Places Conference in 2018. Uh, so I, I pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. We basically had everything all together, uh, but we hadn't really made the application. We were thrilled to become a certified local government uh, because as you'll see, we, we are very much in love with historic preservation, even though, We've had some glitches over the last 15 years um, with uh, people not understanding what historic preservation was and maybe taking a negative view of it. But trust me, they love the built environment down here. Um, and then we um, also lacked some capacity, so we had not moved forward with both um, the CLG and the Main Street. Main Street was next, and I knew I've worked with both programs, and we couldn't survive without them. Next slide, please. So just to give you an idea of how much we love historic preservation down here, um, when I say it's the will of the people, I want you to notice here, this is a, 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 a Facebook page uh, for the city of, La, not for the city of La Junta, but it's put on by the locals. They have 5.6K, that's over 5,000 members on this little Facebook page. Page, and all they do is go through the history and the built environment of La Junta every single day. And, 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 and you, you might have 80 responses for one little post of a photograph. Okay, I remember when we used to go to the front counter, and do you remember the entranceway? And I mean, all these comments. So these people love their built environment, but they didn't, I mean, they don't know it called historic preservation. All right, they know it as the buildings of La Junta. So it really is truly, truly loved. Um, so, and I just want to give you a little bit of history too. I don't have a fancy slide on how we've developed over time, but we started out in planning. And the planning department is interesting. They're very good at what they do. They really care about water mains and they also care about accessioning new land. But in terms of historic preservation, it was not a good fit. So we moved to urban renewal. And I know that sounds strange. That's a very strange combination. But my urban renewal group, when you mention historic preservation or historic buildings, their faces light up like little kids at Christmas. And they can like ducks to water when it comes to the training that's provided by CPI and also by um also by the the CLGs. So I, you know, sometimes you think you have the right fit, but you don't have the right fit. Next slide, please. Um, I'd also like you to know that I think that we have a good fit 
when it comes to putting together all the powers and duties of CLGs with Main Street. You can take all those little categories that I showed you before and you can slide them into how they work with Main Street. And I've done this. This is how my brain thinks. I think in terms of ecosystems. And this is an ecosystem. Uh, Main Street is an ecosystem that works really, really well with certified local government. Next slide, please. So again, the idea of the ecosystem, uh, the Main Street Economic Development, CLG, and we're also in HPC as well as Urban Renewal. This is a brand new website that we just launched. And it shows how basically everything integrates together. And we have to do that. And I'll tell you why. Because we have over 2,000 historic properties in the city of La Junta. So we, we have a lot to be proud of, but we have a lot of work to do. So we have to integrate as many programs as we possibly can so that we can save these buildings, um, we can rehabilitate them, and we can train people. Next slide, please. So let me tell you what we're doing right now. Um, we, uh, we've just applied, this is no pressure at all, Erica. Uh, we <laughs> just applied for a CLG grant and this is to start our historic resource survey for the down, downtown La Junta. This is going to be, this is the, this is, this is the beginning of everything for us because we don't know what we have. And without doing this survey, we're, we're just lost. We want to do it, but I don't have historians in town that really can combine the historic knowledge and also understanding the built environment. So this is very, very much, very much needed so that we can move on to all the other things that we really need to do. And it's also going to help us actually with all the other things that we're working on. We want to do signage. We want to give tours. We want to do... Um, uh, have tax credits, and we want a historic district downtown, but we don't know if we qualify yet. So that's why this is so essential. Actually, we know we pretty do qualify, do qualify. but anyway, we want it to be official. We want it, and we want that knowledge. Um, next slide, please. So the other thing we've done already, and actually this was under the planning department, it's the one thing I got them to do, uh, which was a local designation of an Air, Army Air Force hangar, which is not in the Main Street area, it's out at um, our industrial park, which used to be this huge, huge center for the Army Air Force. I mean, you wouldn't, it was like a separate city, and it's all gone now. And this is one of the few hangars Army Air Force hangars from World War II that still exists because they were meant to only last for 15 years. So we've sort of babied this puppy and um, that's why it's on the list. Next, please. The other thing we just recently did was we've um, uh, voted on giving some money to the Santa Fe Trail uh, Bicentennial Symposium that's coming up this year, and you're going to hear a lot about it at the CPI conference. And it, the reason why is we are, the city of La Junta is right on the trail. And we don't really think about linear resources that much, but this is really, this is important. This is, to me, as important as a building, and it's an integral part of our history. So I'm very proud of them for saying, you know what, we want to be part of this. And the other thing that I don't have a slide for, but I want people to know about, we also did a Section 106 review of the Burlington Northern and Santa Fe uh, Railroad Station. Um, and this was a couple years ago. So we've done a few things. I think this is pretty good for, you know, switching, you know, commissions and, and, and training and getting people up to speed. Next slide, please. So the question is, what's next? All right. And let's go to the next slide. What is next? is I've got a La Junta Economic Development Action Plan that is being funded through DOLA, of course, because they're always so generous and they are, are all, they're forward thinking, okay? And this is a plan that I'm working on with Puma and is gonna include historic preservation, possibly a trade school for historic preservation. I've got, I'm telling you, the people on the CLG and the, and the Urban Renewal Authority, they want that to happen. They, they want a trade school. I mean, they're crazy. Uh, they just, they go for big things. Um, the other thing is, is that I'm going to be working on preservation of the Presbyterian Church downtown. 
And the other thing is, is I'm going to matriculate, I hope, in Main Street, move on up. And the last thing is, is we're very eager to move forward on um, working on design review. But we have to get these ducks in a row first, um, which the first thing is, Erica, Erica, is the, um, uh, the survey, the historic survey plan. So, and the plan. So, uh, we all want a trade school. I want a trade school too. And I know the people who could help us get to the trade school because I was in, as you know, at, 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 at the save, uh, actually, State Historical Fund for so many years. We'll get them to all work on it. Seriously, we'll get this. So, um, anyway, with the Economic Development Action Plan, we will get a trade school here. We will trade, train the young folks. We'll do, um, and also, well, anyway, it's, it's, it's too complicated and I don't have much time to talk about it, but we're going to get there. Oh, and that guy, I, he's my new son. Um, I'm adopting him in two months. He's coming from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and his name is Beethoven, but he's going to be known as B, and he's jo joining my beautiful Aussie doodle, Alfie. And um, so, yes, he is so cute, isn't he? Anyway, thank you for listening. And I'll answer any questions you have, but I can't cut out anybody else. I could talk for hours. So thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me to be part of the CLGs. And thank you so much for allowing me to be part of the Main Street community because they both rock. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, next, let's hand it over to Lisa Popovich with Main Street Steamboat Springs. Um, hi everyone, I'm Lisa Popovitz, the Executive Director of Main Street Steamboat. Um, and uh, my slides, I am the non-academic in this group, so my slides are just lovely pictures of my town. So Tracy, if you just want to change them up, you know, as we, as we talk. Um, Main Street um, has a different role than, than these other communities uh, in uh, our CLG. I will just start by saying, um, that history, historic preservation, heritage, all those words are so important to us as citizens of Steamboat as is evidenced by this phone call. Um, we have Ariante Stetner, who is a former commission member, Marianne Capra, who is a current um, commission uh, member, uh, Canis Barrister, who is the executive director of our local museum, and um, Emily Katzman, who is the executive director of Historic Route County, all on this call um, and knew about this call before I did. Uh, they were all registered before um, I was even going to speak. So um, in deference to them, um, they all know more about of this than I do. So um, uh, they are, are, are such a great resource for me um, as the executive director of Main Street Steamboat. Um, our CLG uh, uh, has been established for a while. Um, I'm not going to give you any dates because I'll get them wrong and there are people fact checking me on this call. Um, it, it's a kind of an interesting story how it came about. Um, there was a group of very concerned citizens who saw that our built environment was being threatened, that many of our important buildings were um, threatened or being torn down in uh, uh, for development, for future development. Um, and they saw the need for uh, the importance of preservation, but also mindful development and how it integrated with what we were already doing. So our um, Historic Preservation Commission was established through an ordinance with our um, local government. And I'm gonna read you the mission statement because um, I think it's important. Uh, the mission of the Historic Preservation Commission is to identify those elements of the built, natural, and cultural environment that help define the character of Steamboat Springs and to, to encourage by providing education resources, review, and guidance, their protection, preservation, and restorations. Um, some of the important words like encourage and guidance when we talk about um, historic preservation, we also need to talk about ha it having teeth. In Steamboat, we don't have an ordinance um, or code that support historic preservation, but we're working towards it. Um, our buildings in downtown are part of the National Historic um, 
district. And uh, we just recently in the last couple of years finally got some signs up so that we understand when we're walking through downtown that those areas are designated. Um, there, we do have um, a local registry as well. So there are many buildings that aren't on the national registry that don't necessarily qualify or meet the um, interior standards, but we recognize locally as being important to our downtown. But there are no hard and fast codes or laws that protect them. So the most important thing that we as May at Main Street do is to help educate the community uh, and to work with other groups to make sure that um, the larger community understands the historic significance, not only of our downtown, but those surrounding landmarks, those other places in Steamboat that are so important to our heritage. Um, I will say um, one of the most exciting things that has happened with um, the commission in 2020 uh, is that we did have a designation, our Sulphur Cave in Springs uh, was just recently named a National Natural Landmark. Uh, and I think it's the newest one in Colorado. And that's very exciting. These caves are, um, are fascinating and dangerous. And if you come to town, you can visit them. And I'm sure um, uh, Marianne would love to, to talk to you about, give you a little tour and talk to you about the significance of those um, sulfur caves um, and the worms that live in them that only live there. Uh, so we have special worms in Steamboat. Um, but uh, to get back to um, education and, and uh, advocacy and support. So in addition to our Historic Preservation Commission, which is the governing body, so all of the things that Erica outlined is their responsibility, but it's all, preservation is so much bigger than that. It's all of our responsibility. So there are other groups that work in concert to support those ideas of historic preservation in Steamboat. So um, we have Historic Route County, that really manages a lot of projects, um, preservation projects and works with the State Historical Society uh, to preserve uh, those parts of Route County that are um, that need to be preserved and are uh, significant. Um, and there's Emily, I can see you at the bottom. Um, and then we have um, obviously uh, the Tread Pioneers Museum that, um, that chronicles our heritage because just as important as the, as the built environment, that part of our heritage is so important. Those things that are important to us like um, agriculture and um, our ski industry, uh, all of those things work together. Uh, and then there's a group of, there's an informal group, Partners in Preservation. They're just a group of people who are very concerned with uh, the future of our community. So we are in Steamboat um, standing at a crossroads. Um, we are the victims of our own success. So we see our cute little homes in downtown uh, disappearing because people want to live here and they want to they want to take those old homes and scrape them off and put a giant home down so they can be downtown. And we don't have the code that protects them. So this group of people have worked very hard to work with this city and with the commission um, to help strengthen those, those laws. So we did make some progress in the last year. Um, and I say we, and I mean them, just so that you know that. Um, they um, worked hard with our, um, our city planner, Rebecca Bessie, to, uh, to get a, a full-time position approved at the city that is about historic preservation and education. Um, because of COVID, that, that position is, I think, only uh, part-time now. But I think as soon as things kind of turn around, um, that will be restored. Um, understanding when you purchase a, a historic building, the responsibility, not just the fiscal responsibility, but the community responsibility. When you build, when you buy a building in Steamboat that is historic or, or almost historic, you, there, there's this pressure from the community to keep it the way it is. Um, 
and it's important for us to help educate. So when someone does buy a building downtown um, and it is historic or significant, they get a letter from me saying, welcome to the neighborhood. Um, we love that you bought a historic building. Here are the ways that you can help um, take care of it. And then we connect them with um, those resources that Erica was talking about. So um, whether it's tax credits or um, understanding the planning process, we let them know who their contact is so that they can proceed in a way that is thoughtful. Um, some people are very surprised to know that they have purchased an historic building and you would think that that would be very evident, um, but it's not. Uh, the other thing that is happening in Steamboat um, is that up on our mountain, so our historic district um, exists downtown in our main street district. It's in, encapsulated inside it. But up on the mountain, we're quickly uh, approaching this time where the buildings um, at our ski resort, many of them are going to be historic and trying to identify which buildings are relevant um, and need preservation is kind of at the forefront of where we are right now. Um, we need to be thoughtful about what we want to preserve and what is significant and then what we can uh, sacrifice, God, that's the awful word, in the, for, um, for posterity. So that like, so as we, as we go on in progress, we don't want progress to erase the past. We want them to coexist. Um, but not in a false way. We want what's new to be new and what's what's old and significant to be preserved. Uh, so it, it's a it's a complicated world. Um, not everybody understands why the built environment and the history of it is so important. But I think that when you walk down the streets in Steamboat, you see it, you feel it. Sometimes it's untangible when people say, gosh, it's just so welcoming and it feels really good. Well, that is the result of a lot of people's really hard work to make it the, that way, to keep it that way, to, to honor our heritage, to honor those things in the past that were important to us, while then allowing those things in the, that are happening now to develop. Um, so um, I'll just conclude by saying um, Main Street, a lot of what we do um, is just support these other people. I strongly believe as a Main Street manager, we have so much to do. If someone is better at it than you, you should let them do it. <laughs> so these guys in Steamboat, they all know and are so not, they're so knowledgeable, they're so generous with their time. Um, I'm just here to say, well, what can I do to help? Um, or maybe I can do this, or maybe I can do that. Maybe I can, maybe I can make some banners, or I can make an uh, place an ad, or, or, or write something for you. Um, I'm definitely in a support role for those other organizations. Um, I hope that makes sense. That's really all I have. Um, but I really hope that you all come to Steamboat and visit us and enjoy our historic downtown. And there's a picture of Marianne at the, at the Black Sulphur Springs, pretty cool. <laughs> Very good, thank you, Lisa. And thank you to all everyone for presenting. We're gonna open it up for questions and I realize, and I wanna be respectful of everyone's time that this ends at noon, um, but I'm, I'm willing to stay on the call afterwards if anyone has questions um, and, and maybe some of the others and the speakers could do the same if they have time, um, we'd love to do that. Um, but yeah, thank you to everybody who presented today. And let's, uh, let me throw in one thing. We have the best preservation resources in the country. And I mean that literally. We have a 35% state historic tax credit. The next closest is a 30 in Kentucky. And then everything else is 20 to 25%. So we're on top. Um, besides that, we have a state historical fund, which I don't think any other state has. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. So that and the resources with the CLG program all the other staff at History Colorado, we just have a tremendous potential to do good work. Um, so now let's hand this off for some questions and answers. And I'm not sure how Tracy wants to handle that. Well, 
and you can either type them in the chat or unmute yourselves. I see a question in chat from Deidre um, asking Lindsay um, to review a little bit more the requirements of becoming a CLG, but I think Erica might be the one to best answer that question. Erica? Oops, I was muted. Yep. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, essentially the requirements for becoming a CLG are passing that local preservation ordinance. That's kind of the root of everything. Once you get that done, uh, the rest is easy to follow. So that requires, you know, a lot of discussion with your city or town council or county commissioners, depending on what area you're in. Um, and there has to be certain requirements in there. So firstly, establishing that historic preservation commission, uh, making sure you have that regulatory process in place. Uh, those are the two primary elements. And we actually have a guide to help you write that ordinance. Uh, so I think writing the ordinance is the easy part. Uh, getting it approved is the hard part. <laughs> and depending on your community, that can take a long time or it can be a quick process. So I would be happy to put some helpful links in the chat here uh, for more information. Um, let's see, I've got another question here in the chat. Um, after hearing more from Lisa and Steamboat, what do speakers think is the best way to coordinate a CLG? It's benefit and resources, main streets and the resources, HP commissions, HP organizations, et cetera, so that we can max maximize benefits, access, communication, et cetera. Um, I think we could, could probably go through um, kind of quickly, once again, how each town is organized. And I think each I think each community finds um, different methods um, better for them. And I think that's just kind of, you know, kind of how Main Street itself rolls is um, each community kind of, you know, figures out its best situation. We've got Main Streets that are municipal um, based, um, uh, nonprofit based, chamber based, um, economic development commission based, um, DDA based. And so, um, and, and then, you know, um, as, as you've seen here, you've seen how the different um, communities have done it. And like Lisa said in Steamboat, let the people who do it best do it. So, so to them, you know, Main Street does the downtown economic development best and, and their long established preservation commission does preservation and, and historic preservation best. Um, and so they've kind of looked at it that way. But maybe um, Lisa and Lindsay, if you want to um, talk a little bit about Central City and hand it off to Cynthia, because I know you have two very distinct approaches in your two communities. Yeah, um, so in Central City, um, like we were saying at the beginning of the um, slides and everything, um, both the Historic Preservation Commission and Main Street are commissions of the city and the members of the commission um, are appointed by the city council. On the Historic Preservation Commission, we're really lucky to have um, one uh, staff member from the Gilpin Historical Society and then two members of the Gilpin Historical Society board. So we are able to work really closely with them and that is super helpful, um, especially in getting um, historic photos and any other research, research that's been done on different properties. Um, and they have all sorts of great background knowledge um, to bring to the table as well when we are doing um, HPC meetings. And then um, since Lisa and I are both staff members, we're able to um, coordinate different efforts with um, the HPC and um, our CLG and then Main Street as well. So, um, you know, if if Lisa needs some information that's from our historic surveys and I can help point it that way, or if um, we have a historic property, um, uh, like for example, we had some inquiries about one historic property on our Main Street area. Um, and I was wondering how to make it um, accessible, ADA accessible. So Lisa um, contacted Larry and he was able to provide some architectural assistance with that. So we're able to help property owners um, through all these different programs um, together. Yeah, and I would just echo what Lindsay said, having both of us in the same office um, really makes it a lot easy, easier to collaborate and share the resources between the two programs, even though they're separate city commissions in our case. You know, in Steamboat Main Street is a 501c3, so we're completely separate. Um, but uh, Marion Camera, who is a member of the commission, is also serves on the Main Street board, so we have that um, connection. Um, and then uh, when invited, I joined the Partners in Preservation to talk about things that 
that they're doing and offer assistance in anything that we can do. Uh, Main Street was definitely, uh, Main Street was formed because of, of the forming of the commission. Um, in Steamboat, we saw the historic preservation was so important. Uh, Tracy Burnett, my predecessor, saw the Main Street program and actually went to a national meeting without knowing that there was a, a Colorado um, organization. So uh, she saw that Main Street could really help um, form this idea and and further it. Um, that was, you know, 15 years ago at least. Um, and so now we've we've grown to be parallel instead of so entwined. Um, what Main Street really did in the in the process of Main Street helped to inform the, the CLG as they moved along. And Cynthia, do you want to unmute and address a little bit more about how CLG and, and Main Street work there? Do they have separate boards and, and, and working together? I know you kind of are the staff for both roles. Yes, I am. I'm the staff and I'm city staff, which I absolutely love being city staff because I have the best city manager in the world. And he basically leaves open the ability for us to work in tandem with the city staff to get things done. So if I need somebody to haul something or to um, uh, advise on something, I've got city staff at all times. So, so the, the urban renewal and the CLG, as you know, are, are uh, part of city government. Um, so uh, again, uh, city staff. Uh, in terms of the main street, I have reached out to um, some people in the town as well as quite a few city staff members. And, and again, um, what's good about this is they also, the city gives me money so that so that I have a built-in amount of money that I can dedicate towards Main Street and towards seven uh, CLGs. They give us seven thousand dollars a year towards CLGs and any sort of activity that we might want to do. So um, the one thing, just like some other people, really, really, really need to change the code, okay, and um, and also ordinances so that they. Uh, allow us to have some teeth. I agree 100%. Without the teeth, we can't get anybody. But give me a little time. It's only been, you know, three some years. And uh, we'll get people to understand that it, it, what the teeth would be would be to protect your resources, not to destroy your resources or take away your ability to control. It's things that you really want to have happen. So we're way over and we're dropping people like flies. <laughs> so I'm just going to thank everybody and be quiet. Um, and, and of course, if you ever have any questions, please just uh, reach out to um, any of us on staff with the state, either, um, you know, with Colorado Main Street here at DOLA or um, at the State Historical Fund in History Colorado for CLGs. Real simple email addresses. If you saw our names, it's just our first name dot our last name at state.co.us. Um, so um, we definitely appreciate everyone joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for staying late. And thank you, everyone who spoke as well. Gail and, or Erica, anything else to add? I don't think so. I was just plugging my survey again in the chat window for everyone that's left. Um, like I said, we'd really appreciate any feedback, especially from our non-CLGs. I think I've already guilted our CLGs into filling up the survey. <laughs> well, it was really great to have everyone on the call. I agree. This was a, a very good group and very interactive. and. Um, we're here to help however we can. So reach out and um, we just wish you all well. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody.